Well, welcome to our uh, Overcoming Overeating. It's me, Dr. Rona, and we are on step three tonight. And I am excited to see that some of you have um, jumped in and started to um, have the courage to start to tell us a little bit about yourselves. And I am just really want to encourage you all to continue to take those steps to jump in. I think the sharing, um, though it's a little scary to be the first ones um, to jump in and say um, who you are and a little about yourself, it really will make the group work better and everyone will get more out of it. And you have to trust me with this. You will get more out of it if you put more in. Um, and so just just uh, give it a try. You don't have anything to lose, really. Um, we're all here in the same boat. And so um, what have you got to lose? Just uh, your craziness, right? Your, uh, your negative um, old relationship with food. Uh, that's what we got to lose. So happy Sunday. And tonight we're talking about step three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. So tonight, I actually, if you notice in the workbook, I have a part uh, where I usually tell stories. And I think tonight we're going to start there. And I'm going to tell a story about myself, and my own recovery. Um, step three was I found a really challenging step because I didn't understand it. Like, how do you turn your life and will over to the care of God? And um, but I, I have this story. This was sort of my first moment of um, revelation of understanding. And um, this was a turning point. It was a pivotal pivotal point in my recovery. Um, so I, it was May 1983, a long, long time ago. And um, at that point, I had been working on recovery for a couple of years. And I was, um, you know, going through the trials of not getting it, um, just trying and falling and trying and falling and not really getting it. It just wasn't coming together. And um, I was really working hard, though, to try to learn everything that a person can learn to try to have a successful recovery. And so I was filling my mind with recovery principles and following the 12 steps as best as I could. But I still was really messing up a lot. And um, it was two and a half years, to be exact, um, in, of uh, trial and error. And then here I stood this one particular night. I was a college student and I was studying with a friend and I left the house of my friend and I was obsessing with uh, about food. And um, I was I used to have this thing I called the prey on the way to 7-Eleven syndrome. I'm sure some of you can relate to this. Well, of course, you know, I would ask God all the time to take away my food problem, my weight problem. Of course, everybody wants the magic problem. If we could just eat whatever we want and be thin, that would be great. But I wouldn't have minded if, you know, maybe just God would stop this crazy mess. Um, and so I, you know, I called the prayer in the way to 7-Eleven syndrome because I used to, you know, I'm driving to 7-Eleven asking for a miracle. And, uh, but of course I was on, on the wrong track. Um, and so that's a little bit of a problem. So here I was though, trying to learn. And so I'm standing at 7-Eleven and I have my hands on a package of cookies and it's probably like 12 o'clock at night. I, and, and I've got my hands on a, a package of, of cookies and some intensely intense sugar and um the and the the words count that from step three came into my head and the words were thy will not mine be done and so i put the cookies down and i walked out of 7-eleven with a pack of sugar-free gum and I haven't had any any sugar since then. That was May 1983. But I share this story because in step three, we're, um, it's about aligning our will with God's will. And it's about um, that, that message of thy will, not mine, be done. It's really an action step. It's a it's a movement. It's not just this passive prey on the way to 7-Eleven thing, hoping that somehow God would stop me. I used to fantasize maybe that God would turn my car around or it was stupid prayers. Um, 
but uh, the, to say thy will be done and then walk in the right direction. And um, they used to say, I used to hear this saying, and, and I, maybe it's a stupid saying, but it worked for me. This idea that um, if I do my 1%, that God would carry me the rest of the way. And there was just something about turning away and walking out of the 7-Eleven and in obedience and a sort of aligning my will to God's will and that I was empowered and it taught me about what it means to to live to align my will to God's will instead of like fighting against this problem it was just giving up it was like a surrendering of my of the fight and just you know giving in in a sense to God and I don't I don't believe it's God's will for me to be binging um or you know stuffing my face or or hating myself for uh, you know, for the way that I was living. I believe that it's God's will for me to have sane, a sane relationship with food and my body. And so aligning my will with that is aligning my will with God's will. And so I think in this step, it's really not just talking about food, but also um, to be in a, in a dependent relationship with God about everything. It's turning our life and will over to the care of God. And I, I believe when we start to go into the other steps later, we'll understand there's so many reasons that we eat and all the underlying things. I think as we align our will to God's, that we have more peace and less reasons to use food. And so if we think about it, I believe that without um, meaning to in any way um, hold a bar up and say we all should be perfect because that's not realistic as I, I believe God loves us um, even though we're imperfect and he forgives our imperfections and our struggles and I'm very grateful for that because I don't know what I would be like if I didn't know that I was forgiven for for my weaknesses um, but I, I think that there is this sort of, if we can realize that um, there is a holiness that God, uh, that, that brings peace and that when we're in God's will, there's peace. There's, you know, when we're doing things our own way, that we don't have peace. Um, and so whether it's any sort of obsession or compulsion, whether it's spending too much or flirting with the wrong person or um you know uh you know eating is one thing but it could be you know maybe there's other behaviors or attitudes lying or other things that you just know are sort of wrong and you have this guilt gut feeling about it and you just do it anyway and so when you think about surrendering your life and turning your life over to god it's really agreeing to do sort of let go of these behaviors and attitudes that don't line up with what would bring peace and holiness and i i know as i have grown in recovery i've learned that if it doesn't bring peace there's probably something wrong if there's some if i'm feeling like a gut sense that i have gone off track it's sort of like when you're driving down the road and you can hear the sound that your tires are now hitting the that um thing on the road that tells you you're off the road here um you know and so we want to align ourselves so that we're on the road that god wants us to and if we live that way we will have peace and i think we have a higher likelihood for freedom and so so in and also we're talking about really dependence in this step dependence on god it's really um reliance and dependence one of the things i love that aa talks about is they talk about electricity and i think it's a great analogy if you think about um you know, getting out of the idea of you depending on your own power and depending on God's like, you know, when when we fight the battle in our own strength, it, it doesn't work because our own power doesn't work. But it's like sort of like your phone or your computer doesn't really work on its own unless it's plugged in and charged up. And, you know, in the same way, like if you get a brand new computer and it's super high tech and your computer hasn't been plugged in, it's not doing anything. And and so that's the same thing as us. If we really need the power to um, do anything, we really need to understand this sort of, I like these, the term that's often used in 12-step programs is, is desperate dependence. To understand that 
there's no way you have to plug in. You need the power of God to be able to make the changes. It's not going to happen. It's not you fighting the battle. It's you relying and depending on uh, the on God and and you agreeing to um, just to re release yourself to to Him. And so it's really faith with feet. It's believing God, but it's walking out that faith and not in your own strength. And this is not a thing that makes us tired. It actually, you you know, when you're empowered by God, you're not fighting in the same way where you, you have, you know, people feel like dieting so hard and you feel like, oh, it's so, you know, it's so hard to fight the, that, you know, against that temptation. But when you're in that place with God, it's not that way. And, and the freedom that comes when you're really doing it with God, it's not, it's not a fight. It's, it's like, a, it's just freedom. And I believe that is going to happen for everyone here. And that's what we're believing God for is that kind of dependence that comes that allows us to really be free. Um, and so the, the, the AA book says the effectiveness of the whole program depends on our getting this step down. So this getting to the place where we understand that our dependence is on him. And so we, we need to go from knowing this to walking this out. This is faith with feet. We have to put this into our feet. We need to act it, act this out. So like another way like that I can think of doing this is like sort of to take a verse, like we had talked about, I, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. That was one that we said last week. Um, but also how about um, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Or, um, you know, I am a new creation. Like, you know, the old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. To take these words and by faith believe. Like if you believe the word of God says you are a new creation, the old has passed away. If you believe that by faith the sun has set you free. So to take that by faith, and I know, I know I was there and I know how it feels to have the hopelessness and and despair and to feel like that's not true. I'm not really free. I'm not living in freedom. But faith is to believe even when you don't see and to, to take the action to say, okay, I may have failed a million times. I've fallen and fallen and fallen, but that's what the word says. But it says he, that who the sun sets free is free indeed. So I'm going to apply that faith to my feet. And I'm going to take it by faith that I am free. And I'm going to align myself with that by, by walking in freedom. And, and we take it by faith even step by step, one step at a time, believing that by plugging into God's power and applying that word by believing in that truth that I am a new creation, that that who the sun sets free is free indeed, that I am free, that the chains are broken and that I am free and I can eat in a healthy way and not give in to the compulsion because I am free from that compulsion. And of course, I'm saying that this is by faith. So I'm going to um, start just... I encourage you do the questions if you haven't been doing them yet it's okay just you can always catch up um, and I do think it will be helpful if you could share about your journeys and we can do that together because um, I'm sure if you just listen that's good but if you listen and apply it will be better so um, I want to read some verses to you just from this I know I've been talking about verses but I want to read some from each week I've been doing that and so from the workbook at the end um, so I love this verse Philippians 1 6 and I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Isn't that encouraging? Um, and let's see. So Proverbs, we all know this, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Um, and so this is the one, I keep on thinking of this one. I know, I think I mentioned this in another time, but Isaiah 40, 31, 
But they who wait for the Lord will sh uh, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I think it's just great if we could just imagine, um, you know, just imagine yourself on the wings of the eagle. And that, you know, because we are weary in our own strength, but if you could just put this, put yourself on the eagle in your own mind, imagine yourself in that place where you are not exhausted and you are not weary, but you are going in his power and just, and seeing that you can, by his faith, by faith in him and by walking with him, that you can not be um, living, you know, fighting a battle, but actually being released into this place of dependence that allows you to do this freely. And um, I just look forward to hearing stories of everybody experiencing that if you just stay the course and don't quit. And so I think otherwise I'm going to, I've already, um, here's another one, one more. Submit yourself therefore to God, um, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And well, I don't need to read the whole thing. I think that's the main thing. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So, all right. I, that's it for my little talk. And um, I would like to uh, be available now for questions or comments. If anybody has any that they would like to share. I ha I do see that some of you are here and I'm so happy that you are here. Um, and I would love to, to, you know, connect and just tell me if you have any questions or thoughts. So I, let's see, I've often prayed that I could eat what I want and not, yes, I, uh, how about that? Wouldn't it be so nice, like a magical cure, but God is going to, he, he's, going to give us the power and then and then it will happen but yeah i don't think it's yeah wouldn't it, that's like magic we can eat whatever we want and never be fat wouldn't that be great faith with feet yes it's a great image yes it is so that's it it's walking the walk with him we do need to put put these words to action so what anybody else have any thoughts or questions i'm happy to uh, answer any any questions or I would love for you guys to talk a little bit be, between yourselves if you have anything I'm so glad for those of you who are willing to share and admit that you relate and you know we're in this together so thank you so much for coming and um, you know if you have uh, just stick with us. We're going to have a nutritionist coming on soon. Another day I'm waiting to sign her up to come talk about food planning. And um, we're going to get into some meatier stuff coming forward. So please don't quit on us. It's going to get, it might get a little heavy, but it's going to be great. We're going to have a good time. Just please stay the course because it, it's, there's a, this is a healing journey. And I promise you, if you don't quit, it will work. So, all right, God bless you. Have a great week. I'm here for you.